The railways were privatized uh, because there was a, a situation mainly with the debt uh, where it was seen as the only way of solving this really very serious situation. Um, JNR had come to play a, a certain role in Japanese national life, including Japanese political life, whereby it was unable to control its own investment and it was being forced to build lines in increasingly marginal areas for political reasons, which it then had to finance and pay for. And it just couldn't, uh, as a uh, public corporation as it was then, it wasn't in a position to resist these pressures. The government privatized the system in 1987, and now the new companies are being launched on the stock market. The debt the National Railways ran up will still have to be paid by the nation because they are so essential to the economy. Private or not, if they get into difficulties, the government is likely to come to their aid. So even in Japan, where there is a will to support the railways, where there are natural allies in business, government and society, and where railways make geographical sense, there is still a price to pay. dozen great cities, the bugle call of industry has summoned the clan. Legions of craftsmen have joined to supply transportation for a nation of individuals. America was the first nation to transfer its affections from the rails to the road. Cheap, mass-produced cars promised personal transport for a nation of individuals and sent the railways into decline. The new automobiles stream from the factories, spreading pleasure and speeding business all across the country. The destination? Everywhere, USA. KFWB News 98. All news, all the time. This is KFWB News 98. You give us 22 minutes, we'll give you the world. Let's check an incident on the 101 in downtown. Here's Jeff Baugh. Well, that problem is going away right now. We're southbound 101 at 4th Street. Just before you hit the East LA interchange, we had a couple of cars block up the fast lane. That's clearing right now. However, the southbound Hollywood is jammed solid all the way back to Vermont and still building, actually. Jeff Baugh, Jack Copter 98. Just getting reports now on the Pomona Freeway westbound beyond Lorena in East L.A. that we may have a fender bender. Again, that's westbound. Get it first, get it fast. Traffic every 10 minutes only on KFWB. News 98. Uh, the freeways, uh, gosh, they're just always jammed here in Los Angeles. It's uh, one of the most complicated systems I've ever seen. And uh, our morning drives, afternoon drives here, it's not unusual at all to find a good uh, 20, 25-mile backup and that's just with uh, with traffic itself, no accidents or pileups or anything like that. When we do have accidents, it's just horrendous. The traffic goes back for miles, and of course, everybody sits on the freeways, and uh, the smog gets worse and worse and worse. It's very clear, if you look at some cities like Los Angeles, uh, that we're coming to the end of the automobile age. Uh, because if you look at average speeds in our cities, they're slowing down. If you look at car sales, they've been flat or down for maybe a decade. And I think a historian looking back on it is going to say around 1990 was in some sense the end of the automobile age. And as we move into this more congested environment of the 21st century, we're going to have to find some other modes of transportation. Los Angeles was once the home of one of the world's largest electric railways. It was so much a part of the fabric of the city that when the film industry established itself there, the famous Pacific red cars were stars of silent cinema. Los Angeles grew up with the streetcar, and that meant that real estate developers could buy outlying uh, parcels of property, subdivide them, and make them attractive to customers by connecting them to the downtown area with a streetcar line. Among the major developers making Los Angeles work at the beginning, among the people building the street railways and subdividing outlying land was Henry Huntington, who already had uh, family connections in the railway business and who primarily made his money through real estate development, 
but the mechanism by which the real estate development was successful was that transportation connection to the business areas of the city. Huntingdon created the Pacific Electric Company in the early 1900s, running lines out to what were then farming areas. Houses and then suburbs soon grew up along the tracks. The network was the largest in America. It defined the shape of the city. It was touching in the Southern California of the 1950s or 1960s to look back on the plans that Henry Huntington, for example, had laid for Southern California with his red line trains, because you could see the same cities that were th there in Los Angeles' suburban development, but connected not by Interstate 10, not by the San Bernardino Freeway, not by the Santa Ana Freeway, but by this network of, of tram cars and trolleys and, and, and the red trains. And I often imagined how nice that must have been to be able to go the same routes to make the same connections, but in these, uh, these elegant looking train cars of yesteryear. Popular as a public service, the red car system only made money for a few years. It was easy prey for the competition. In the early 1950s, a number of major corporations, the oil industry, the tire industry, uh, the uh, automobile industry, conspired to buy up the local city rail systems all over the country. Once they bought them up, they then abandoned the rail uh, cars in those cities. Pacific Electric, the big red car, was our means of transportation, covered 1,100 miles in Los Angeles County. When that system was bought up and uh, was then abandoned, that left us without an effective means of traveling easily, cheaply, efficiently. The last train ran in 1961, creating yet another of the world's graveyards. As car sales in Los Angeles rocketed, those without them lost out. When the red cars were taken out of Watts and out of the Los Angeles area, it, it, it really stagnated to people. I think it had a, a great deal to do with interrupting families, children. Uh, the red car system, like all public transportation, is used a great deal by young people who normally don't have cars, you know, and years ago they really did not. And uh, with the interest that most young people carry about, they need to go places, right? They need to experience things. And I think that job opportunity disappeared because there was not accessibility through good public transportation. Uh, I think that part of the spirit of the community dissipated also because something that you had known disappeared, like your grandmother. You see what I mean? When, when there's something that you're so familiar with, something that you've loved, and something that offers you accommodation, when it simply dissolves, that's, that's painful. For the black community, loss of the railway added to the growing tension about failure to share in the American dream. The Watts riots of 1965 sent a signal to America that minority communities left out of the American dream of progress and prosperity had had enough. America was shocked by the television images of violence and destruction. Civil rights moved higher up the political agenda. But for the better off in the suburban areas, this worrying trend advanced the cause of the car, not only as a means of transport, but also security. My automobile is ready when I'm ready to go. It, it takes me from door to door. I have complete control of who rides in the automobile, when I go, generally when I arrive, though the, obviously traffic is a factor. I can set the air conditioning. I can set my own video, my own uh, audio tape. Uh, and it, it's a secure environment. I set the air conditioning to my own level and pick up children or drop them off as I did when my youngsters were going to school. All over the world, the popularity of the automobile is threatening its very survival.
choked by pollution and traffic jams, the city of Los Angeles is looking to its past for an alternative. Railway tracks are being laid once again down its street. Following a route of the old red cars, the new system is called the Blue Line. For 40 years, Kenny Hahn has been in Los Angeles local politics, representing a predominantly black precinct where he still lives. He was the driving force behind a revived public rail system. Hello. To find the money to build the railway, Hahn's solution was Proposition A, a tax of half a cent in every dollar on consumer goods, levied purely for public transport. Well, uh, it was terribly difficult to get the people to vote for Proposition A, which created the funds. But that, once that was done, then it was my job as a political leader of Los Angeles County to see that my district was done first, which I did. And I had to show my people in my district that they could not only hear the blue line, but they could feel it and write it as a result of a campaign promise I made to them that they would have good transportation. The people who are transit dependent, who have no automobiles and who have no means of transporting themselves from one end of this vast city and county to the other, uh, are making demands that their political leaders build a, a rail system. That's one political pressure. Uh, the other is that uh, the economy of the whole region is dependent upon rapid transport of people and goods. Uh, and so you have this dual approach. Now, if that were not enough, and I think it may be, uh, there is a need to relieve traffic congestion and to relieve uh, air pollution in this vast region. So you've got three uh, very important issues, all of which tie in with political motivation. In Los Angeles, it's politically correct to support rail. If you ask anyone, should we go to collectivized mass transit rail, the answer will be a resounding yes. But in reality, the, the thought that most people have, what's in the back of their mind is, not that I'm going to get into rail, but rather that their friends and their neighbors are going to abandon their automobiles, leave the freeway, and take mass transit rail, and thereby leaving the space available so they then can drive over the freeway without the traffic. And that's what really motivates most people. Mo most of the folks are voting for transit so someone else will ride it. They won't ride it. And I'm being very candid to say, I'm going to be the last one out of my automobile and get into a subway or a rail system. There are no benefits for me and nothing but a downside. People are very, very uh, stubborn here. It's going to be a hard time to get them out of their cars and into any kind of mass transportation. So it's a, it's a difficult job out here. But hopefully, they're going to start making some progress out here. We really, really need a mass rail system. Kenny Hahn addressed that need and convinced enough Los Angeles voters to pass his proposition to build a new rail system along some of the old routes. For Hahn, it secured his success in subsequent local elections and a place in political history. When they counted the precincts, I had many precincts, 90%, 95%, some precincts, 100%. It's unusual in California to get a 90% vote. The president would love to have 90% vote. Why did I get 100% in this precinct? It was because in that area, I, I built a swimming pool for their kids, a library for them, or a fire station, or developed this rail line here that they could use. And then, so when they go to the ballot box, I'm going to vote for Kenny Hahn again, 100%. That's unusual in California, or in America, or maybe in the world. Yong, Sang, Ni, Ich, Start desu. 